front and center this evening. Uh, so we will direct our initial attention to you for City of Alaska case. It is DA 2018-06. Yes, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we talked about all of these cases at your work session last week. Um, these first two items on your agenda are separate requests by the same applicant, um, different requests, and almost the same property. But like we talked about last week, for ease of discussion, we'll go ahead and present them together. Um, but when it comes time to make motion of those, you'll need to do that separately, um, taking action on the rezoning request first. So for clarification, you're going to present six and seven simultaneously? Correct. Okay. Um, and all the slides in here are sort of together, so bear with me. Yes, sir. All right, so this first part is a rezoning request by Integrity Development Partners. Um, is to rezone property that is two parcels of land totaling 2.49 acres. Um, the larger parcel is CH, the smaller parcel is RP, and the request is to rezone both of these to community commercial, which is CC. Um, this is the China Garden restaurant facility on North Ashley Street, as well as an adjacent duplex that faces Embry, um, that is also under the same ownership. And this is related to a, the other request which has a third parcel attached, and that is for plan development. But first dealing with the rezoning, um, character areas, there are two of them in play here. First one is Community Activity Center, which is the more intensive commercial portions of the Ashley Street Corridor. And then Institutional Activity Center, which is those properties for fronting Ashley, but more directly um, related to the BSU North Campus and South Georgia Medical Center. Aerial imagery from about a year and a half ago shows the China Garden restaurant property with the urban forest. You see some of the rooftops of buildings nearby. <coughs> um, you have commercial development along Ashley. Um, to the north, immediately above this property, is the Two Mile Branch Creek floodplain. That property is undeveloped. Um, and then to the north of that, of course, more commercial development continues. The lands to the east is University Drive, and that's part of a large neighborhood. Uh, most of the houses directly behind here are not houses, they're actually duplexes. And as you get deeper into the neighborhood, it becomes more single family. The lands to the west are all part of the VSU North Campus um, athletic fields. And then the hospital is to the diagonal south. Um, here's the survey of the property showing the boundaries and the acreages. And then moving on to the plan development portion. It is that same two parcels <laughs> plus one property that faces University Drive. Um, so it's CC zoning if it's rezoned plus R6 for a planned development for a multifamily housing complex. Again, it's the same type of mapping, survey very, very similar, but a little bit more acreage. But to acquaint you a little bit more with the property, um, this is the China Garden, which as you can see by this picture and this one has been sitting empty for at least the past eight, nine, <coughs> plus years, um, except for about a three or four week stint where it actually reopened as a restaurant um, and then closed back up again. It is simply sitting as an empty commercial building, fairly large, it's over 14,000 square feet just by itself. There's a large building behind it, it's a warehouse, um, and just gathering dust. The subject duplex that faces Emory is this building. And then this is the other duplex on University Drive. Um, around the property, this is the lands to the directly to the west across Ashley Street. It shows the two mile branch floodplain. This is just north of the ball fields. Um, the commercial property at the corner of Ashley and Emory. And then the office that is next door to this on Emory. And then going back into the neighborhood, this is one of the other duplexes. Um, this is the one at the corner of Emory and university. Uh, the site plan that is in your packet um, shows the complete demolition of all existing buildings, the construction of a four-story apartment building um, that is along the south property line, and then parking or perhaps around it on two sides, um, and then some conceptual plans. At your work session last Monday, I passed out a set of conceptual drawings from the architect these are some revised drawings that we received from the architect earlier today. Um, so I do not have hard copies of this, but I have them <coughs> here on the PowerPoint display. And I think the architect was coming. He may be coming a little later, but was going to be bringing some copies, perhaps of some further revisions. 
Um, but as you can tell, mainly from the site plan, it's a four-story building. It's between 350 and 400 feet in length um, and, and all one mass um, that is articulated um, as it is supposed to be. This is, as we talked about at the work session, within the Urban Commercial Corridor Overlay District, which has architectural standards. Um, so there's no real deviations there. In your packet on page four, I think it is, is a listing of three deviations from the development code. Is that 06 right. or 07 packet? In an 07 packet. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On page 4 of the staff report, there are three items. And as we talked about at the work session, the major of these is the 30% reduction of required parking. <coughs> and that is because the applicant is proposing this to be housing for seniors only, uh, sort of as a retirement uh, village here, similar to some other properties in Valdosta and Hayhara that have been built according to these guidelines, where the residents do not all have vehicles, or if they do, they probably have one. Um, in other words, parking is not in such a high demand. And then the other two items have to do with the supplemental standards for multifamily housing, um, particularly the facade length and the roof pitch. And as I mentioned in the staff report, supplemental standards are for multifamily everywhere, but usually in a residential setting. In this particular case, the property is not in a residential setting. It is a commercial setting along the planned commercial corridor of Ashley Street. So it is natural and logical to staff that the building resemble more of a commercial structure than a residential structure. Um, the applicant is here and can answer questions you may have about the specifics of the type of proposal that they're wanting to put forth to the state. Um, but other than that, I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have for me. Staff is recommending approval of both of these, and then the plan development has a few conditions which are listed there on your staff report. Mm -hmm. Item number seven is the plan development, and there are six conditions. I can go through those if you like, but we touched on those at the work session. Mr. any questions for staff? Any questions at all for staff? There being none, is anyone here this <coughs> evening that wishes to speak in favor of this request, please come forward at this time. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request, come forward. Uh, my name is Steve Brooks. <coughs> Excuse me, I live at uh, 6048 Johnson Road, Northwest, Hay Howard, Georgia. Uh, I work with Integrity Development Partners, and uh, our office is quite over here at 114 West Hill. Uh, downtown, we are the uh, proposed applicant. The applicant for this uh, proposal, uh, we are seeking to build a multi-family uh, <coughs> complex to uh, house seniors. Uh, the definition we're actually using is called housing for older persons, which is a 55 and older designation where one resident in the unit must be at least 55 or older. Um, that way, it's a little more flexible than having a straight 62 and older. Uh, designation that we found to have some uh, yeah, modifications, you know, as life goes on. Um, we're just here to answer any questions you may have. Uh, we have experience in developing multi county all across the southeast. You know, I'd be glad to answer any questions. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, I understand it's going to be at least 80% of the of an older people. Uh, is that what's required? The legal definition says we have to run out 80% of the occupied units okay. to uh, residents that have at least one tenant is 55 or older. Our intent is to rent all the units uh, okay. that way. And that just allows, in case you have a, um, for instance, you have a married family with one person who's 65 and one is 52, and you know something happens, they get divorced, one person passes away or whatnot. The, that way, the resident, if they're less uh, younger than 55, wouldn't have to just move out if they're the only resident left. And how long will that condition be in effect of 80% or the occupancy of the city people? Um, 15 years at a minimum, um, probably longer than that. Once we designed it to be this way, it'll probably stay that way. I mean, you know, it is, you know, I've, we've dealt with y'all in the past. I know, I know you know y'all's reputation and all. Just questions that have to be asked. Especially with the proximity to the college, oh, yes. you know, and uh, we don't want to turn into uh, a, a 
dormitory. I, mean, I wish our enrollment at BSU would go up there. <laughs> but we don't want a dormitory right there for BSU. No, sir. No, the reason we, uh, we chose this site, um, I drive by it every day, twice a day, on the way to and from work. Um, it's obviously in need of redevelopment, but it's also got great proximity to uh, medical uh, services being that close to the hospital. It's very close uh, with the college in between, but very close to the park, city parks, and recreation facilities. Also very close to the drugstore on the corner. Uh, it actually has a lot of amenities uh, that are geared toward uh, this, this age group. Um, additionally, when we design this product, the uh, interior common area and spaces will be designed to, the, to this tenant group. We'll have a community garden, we'll have a community center inside that has more uh, services geared toward an um, aging tenant. We'll have a, a health care unit in there, a little exam room where we can bring in uh, on-site health screenings and things like that. And uh, I understand your questions really to parking. Uh, I used to develop student housing and parking. I mean, if you don't have the parking, you're not going to rent student housing. So, uh, I understand that's a one per bed minimum there. Uh, but this is a totally different type of product, and our intent is just to be uh, this way for as long as we own it or have it. We'll plan on owning it for at least 50 years. Thank you, sir. I'm nice with your project. I'd just like to follow up with what the question just asked is, um, and, I, and I, did that. I know that is a, a concern about collegiate students over there. And, if, if, if I go rent a unit for my, if I'm the primary renter, is there any type of uh, checks and balances to see who's actually residing in there? Uh, all, all the tenants will, <coughs> all the tenants will be on the lease. Um, but this is also, we are, we are proposing to fund this through um, the affordable uh, Department of Free Affairs affordable housing program. So there will be an income restriction on there. And that program also uh, prohibits full-time students from being the primary tenant does not prohibit, um, for example, someone's dependent for being a full-time student um, in that situation, or a married couple, or you know, for one of them to be a full-time student. But, uh, but they would have to qualify on the income for the income records. Yes. Commissioners, any questions? I just have one question, Mr. Chair. Are you comfortable with the parking situation? I know that that was saying that the elderly usually don't have more than one vehicle, if that. Yes, ma'am. We actually get comfortable going down to one, uh, one space per unit. Um, that was the Lord, Mr. Martin, was willing to accept. Right. Uh, which is why we actually reached out and acquired another um, lot off of uh, University Drive. So that thank you, because uh, you know having some green space is important to us. And, right. you know, we actually like to have more green space in parking, but we understand the necessity. Mr. Do you have any questions? Mr. Brooks, thank you very much. Thank you. And I will have a few moments left. In, uh, in your, anybody else wishing to speak in favor of this request to come forward this time? Anyone else present wishing to speak in favor to come forward this time? There being none, is anyone here wishing to speak against this request this evening? Anyone here wishing to speak against this request? There being none, Commissioner. Mr. Chairman, I actually have a question for staff, that's all right. Would you laugh, please? Uh, the first condition which uh, addresses specifically the, the use, which, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> it addresses specifically the use of that, um, that this property would always be, or is for multifamily residential development, for housing for older persons. So does that mean for the for the life of this property from here on out, this will always remain? Correct. If developed under this plan development approval, that's what it must be. It's in the name of the applicant mm -hmm. and for the type of program that the applicant is seeking approval of from the state. Um, in order to change that, a new applicant would need to come back through this public hearing process to amend the plan development or build it conventionally or use it conventionally under CC zone. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions for staff commissioners? Any discussion on this request? 
There be none. I will take a motion on this request. I will let's put the move back up. I will take a motion on the uh, BA 2018-06, the actual rezoning of this request. I'll take a motion on that. Commissioner. I would like to recommend to the city council approval of BA 2018 upstate as presented by the staff. I have a motion from Commissioner Hall. I'll second. Have a second, Commissioner Wild. Any discussion on the motion? Any discussion on the motion, guys? Mm -hmm. There being none, that being said, I will see if I will raise your right hand if you like to get this approved this evening. Ms. Carmella, that passes 7 0. Yeah. I know Commissioner Hall is going to do that. Okay, while we're on this same opening,